Imagine knowing that there's a monster right under your nose. Imagine knowing that this monster is capable of killing any human being on Earth, and all because they simply saw a photograph of its face. When this monster is on the warpath, literally nothing can stop it. No weapon that human beings have invented is capable of even slowing it down. Imagine knowing, in the age of mass media, of clicks and shares, of 24-hour news, smartphones, and limitless social media connecting billions across the globe, that one stray picture of this monster leaked in the wrong place could cause the end of the world as we know it. And this fateful, terrifying day could come at any time. Congratulations! You now know how it feels to be Dr. Dan, the hot-headed lead SCP Foundation researcher on the SCP-096 case. The anomaly itself requires no real introduction. The infamous mass-murdering shy guy has haunted the nightmares of Foundation experts for years, but nobody is more haunted by this thing than Dr. Dan himself. For over a decade now, he has firmly believed that there's one solution to the 096 problem, termination with extreme prejudice. In his eyes, to think that 096 is ever truly contained is an illusion. They could never be sure of how many pictures of it are out there, floating around just waiting to be seen, like a time bomb waiting to go off. The resources spent containing it and cleaning up after its rampages, he would often argue, would be better spent instead figuring out how to finally kill it. But seeing as we're talking about the SCP Foundation here, not the Global Occult Coalition. The O5 Council didn't see it quite the same way. They constantly overturned Dr. Dan's termination requests, leaving the paranoid researcher more furious with each rejection. He tried to warn them again and again and again. Don't you see? It's like a stick of dynamite, and the fuse is already lit. If you don't let me put it out before it's too late, there won't even be anyone left to pick up the pieces. But his pleas fell on deaf ears. Until, of course, Incident 096-1-A. A dark and bloody day still looked back on with shame and horror by even the most hardened members of Foundation staff. It was the day that SCP-096 gave everyone a taste of the mass carnage it was truly capable of. Dr. Dan wasn't even there when containment was first breached. He was off on an expedition in the snowy mountains where 096 was first found, trying to discover clues to its true origin. Dr. Dan's second-in-command, Dr. Oleksi, was also lucky enough to be outside of the containment area when the Shy Guy escaped. According to interviews he gave at debriefing tribunals, he was in the break room, treating himself to a warm cup of joe. All the other personnel assigned to 096's containment and research were near its containment chamber, a giant cube made of reinforced metal, observing a live feed of data being collected from the cube's interior. As usual, sensors indicated that 096 was pacing within. For obvious reasons, the Foundation doesn't maintain any kind of live visual surveillance on 096. It wouldn't be worth the risk. But what seemed like an otherwise quiet day suddenly took a turn for the insane. The monitors began displaying terrifying data, indicating an imminent containment breach as the wails of the creature within the cube echoed out through its metal walls. Some tried to run. Others did all they could to engage emergency procedures, while guards armed with heavy weaponry rushed into the room. They all knew in their hearts that it wouldn't save them, but what else could they do? A huge dent bulged out from the side of the cube, then another, before the metal was torn open like tissue paper as the furious hands of the Shy Guy began clawing their way through it. Secondary layers of protection were deployed, but they didn't help. 096 just kept ripping through all the barriers. As everyone in attendance knew, once it was in its rage state, nothing could stop it. Literally, nothing. The guards attempted to fire on the anomaly, but their bullets did no good. As the creature burst free, most of the people in the room had at least momentary visual contact with its face. In response, Code Lima was declared, and the entire chamber was flooded with a fast-acting nerve gas, killing everyone. Everyone except for 096 itself, of course. 
Within two minutes, 096 had broken free of the entire containment site and began running through the desert at breakneck speeds towards its distant target. The Foundation needed to act fast and find a way to stop it before it hit a population center where the death toll would skyrocket. Team Echo Romeo were dispatched to pursue the creature in a heavily armed attack helicopter, while MTF Tau-1, a task force specializing in SCP-096 containment and recovery, forged ahead to identify the anomaly's target, designated 096-1, and to move any other civilians out of harm's way. Dr. Dan was alerted of the disastrous situation and offered guidance to both teams from afar. Echo Romeo's chopper pursued 096, barely able to keep up. Dr. Dan recommended attempting to at least slow the creature down with heavy arms fire, even though he knew actually stopping it would be impossible. A member of the team used a modified XM500 anti-material rifle to fire several rounds at the creature, but even the shot that passed directly through its head appeared to have no effect on it. But at least they had a lock on its direction now. 096 always travels in a straight line, directly towards its target, smashing through any obstacles in its way. This means its intended direction is relatively easy to track, and people in the path of its trajectory are even easier to save. But it's a high-pressure job reserved for MTF Tau-1. Tau-1 passed over Echo Romeo and 096 in a series of eight V-22 Ospreys, hoping beyond hope that they could outrun the creature, since there were several different towns in its direct path. But thanks once again to the one and only Dr. Dan, Echo Romeo and Tau-1 had a secret weapon that neither team had ever possessed before. Scramble. Scramble was an advanced computer program created by Dr. Dan with the help of Dr. Alexi, which was coded into microprocessors for modification into camera feeds and viewing goggles. The program had been fed intricate data concerning every single detail of 096's face, and as the name suggests, when encountering that visual data in real life, it scrambles it beyond recognition. In theory, it would make it far safer for operatives to be around SCP-096 without activating its rage state. In theory. It wasn't long before disaster struck. 096 had made its way onto I-40 and had begun attacking vehicles it encountered, killing the people inside. By this point, it had already outrun the Echo Romeo chopper, rendering them essentially useless. Tau-1 just had to forge ahead along 096's trajectory and try to get as many people out of the danger zone as possible, until 096-1 was located and destroyed by the anomaly. Years of training for an awful day like this had paid off, as the first three towns along 096's path were successfully evacuated. The Shy Guy just ran right through all of them, and no lives were lost. The same, however, could not be said for town number four. As was standard procedure, Tau-1 had everyone in the town gathered up and blindfolded. The entire team in attendance had modified night vision goggles with scramble microprocessors, so in theory, they were better off than most from 096 if things went south. The Tau-1 members tried in vain to keep everybody in line. They were threatening to shoot anyone who dared to remove their blindfold when 096 finally appeared. It tripped during its approach, rolling and shattering through several houses chaos erupted. Some people instinctively removed their blindfolds to see what was going on, and panicked members of Tau-1 began firing into the crowd. The screams of the civilians and the bursts of gunfire were all drowned out by the horrific wailing of 096 itself, as it tore through everyone and everything to kill the unfortunate souls who had seen its face. And given how many had removed their blindfolds during the initial pandemonium, SCP-096 had a huge number of the townspeople on its list. 096 located and grabbed the original 096-1, the person that had first glimpsed its face and caused all of this. But in the grand scheme of things, he was just one more body on the pile that day. Though of course we mean this in a purely metaphorical sense. 096 never leaves entire bodies. The Foundation operatives in attendance were able to figure out what had caused all this madness and death. 096-1 had been an amateur mountaineer and spent his vacations hiking around any mountain ranges he could gain access to, including the mountain range that 096 had been inhabiting prior to its initial capture and containment. But he hadn't actually seen 096 on that fateful trip, which had been taken over a decade ago. 
but in a photograph taken that day of himself, standing on a picturesque mountainside, 096 made a cameo. It took up all of four pixels, a tiny off-white dot against the snow on the back right side of the photograph. This photograph, with all the deadly potency of an atom bomb, had been sitting there for years, waiting. When the mountaineer was looking through old photos that morning and his eyes passed over those few blurry pixels, he didn't have any idea that he had just laid his eyes on one of the most dangerous anomalies the world has ever seen. But you don't have to know. Only 096 does. As Tau-1 led by their commander Major Jack Wilford tried to retake control of the situation, things got even worse. It turned out Dr. Dan's scramble technology, the one thing that was supposed to have given them an edge in this situation, didn't actually work. As soon as goggle-wearing members of the team laid eyes on 096, it entered its rage state and started massacring them. It tore many of the mobile task force members to shreds, including a number of the operatives required for piloting the eight Ospreys. It was a disaster of truly epic proportions, and the catastrophic failure of Dr. Dan's scramble technology was a key factor. The root of the technology's failure was easy enough to figure out. Dr. Dan's scramble microprocessors worked fast, but not fast enough. Fractions of a second glimpses of 096's face managed to get through, and that was more than enough to set 096 off. Echo Romeo and MTF Epsilon arrived shortly afterwards to clean up the mess. It had been a disaster of such magnitude that even a CNN reporter arrived on the scene and started filming before being promptly shut down by Epsilon. It was a member of Echo Romeo that finally slipped the bag over a docile 096's head, preparing it for containment once again, the creature now content that it had eliminated all of the unfortunate souls who had seen its face. He'd found 096 sitting next to a minivan that had its roof ripped off, the young family inside being the last to have seen its face. And things were so awful in the aftermath of the containment breach that the O5 Council changed their tune, finally granting Dr. Dan permission to terminate 096 by any means necessary. It's terrifying to think that all this can unfold because of a couple of poorly timed accidents, but it's probably even more terrifying to consider that it wasn't an accident at all. It seemed awfully convenient that both Dr. Dan and Dr. Alexei were far from danger when all hell broke loose. It was also convenient that, despite the failure of his technology being a major reason why the breach was as deadly as it was, Dr. Dan had still come out of the situation with everything he wanted. The Foundation also found this strange, and the more they looked into it, the more they found details that didn't add up. Alibis began to fall apart. Coincidences didn't seem so coincidental, and eventually a weak link in the chain was identified. Dr. Alexei. Under pressure from the Foundation, Alexei spilled everything. Dr. Dan had essentially orchestrated the entire containment breach, and on top of that, he did everything he could to make it as deadly as possible, all with the purpose of getting the O5 Council to see things his way and finally give him the permission he needed to devote all of the SCP-096 resources to its termination. But it came at a terrible price to Dr. Dan personally. For his crimes against the Foundation and humanity, he was permitted to try and figure out a way to terminate 096 once and for all. But as payment for his crimes, he himself would also be terminated as soon as his task was complete. Were the lives of all those innocent people, and Dr. Dan himself worth the price of finally being authorized to terminate SCP-096? When asked why he did all of this, Dr. Dan simply said, It worked. There was only a matter of time until that happened in a major population center, and its face spread over the world news. I can kill 096, but I've killed myself in the process. While we don't agree with his methods, there's something almost admirable about a person so single-mindedly devoted to their cause. Now check out SCP-096 The Shy Guy, and SCP-096 Look at a Picture of The Shy Guy in Space, The Shy Guy Questions and Theories if you're still itching for another 096 fix.